Hi, we're going to be looking at gas-powered cycles, more specifically Brayton cycles with reheat, intercooling, and regeneration. The problem statement we have is an ideal gas turbine has two stages of compression and two stages of expansion. The pressure ratio across each stage of compression and expansion is 8. They tell us the inlet conditions for the first compressor are 20 degrees C and 100 kPa. The inlet temperature of the second compressor is 20 degrees Celsius. They also tell us that the inlet conditions for both turbines is 1,100 degrees Celsius. They tell us in order to optimize the thermal efficiency of the cycle, an ideal regenerator is installed at the exit of the second turbine. They want us to determine the compressor work, the turbine work, the thermal efficiency of the cycle, and they tell us that CP is 1.004 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. I'm going to start by drawing out what's going on here. We have compressor one. We're going into an intercooler. We then go on to compressor two. Then from our second compressor, we're going into our regenerator over here. Before we go into our first combustion chamber, then through our first turbine, then through our second combustion chamber where we have our reheat, then through our second turbine, and then we're taking the air from our second turbine and going through our regenerator. So we can call this point one, this here point two, point three, point four, point five, point six, Point seven, point eight, point nine, and finally point ten. If we draw the TS diagram for this, you're going to have to bear with me a bit. We start off here at point one. We increase pressure to point two, so this is point one. We then go through our intercooler and come back to the same temperature as before. We then compress once again to the same pressure because we have the same compression ratio. So this is 0.3. This we said was 0.4. We then go through our combustion chamber. We go through the regenerator and then the combustion chamber, but our regenerator is going to be somewhere over here to a certain temperature. We then go through our first turbine. We then reheat to the same temperature, then go through our second turbine with the same compression ratio, and come back down to here. And our intercooler, or sorry, our regeneration happens at these points. So we go from four, through our regenerator to five, through our combustion chamber, our first combustion chamber to 0.6, through our first turbine to 0.7, back through our second combustion chamber to 0.8, through our turbine to point 0.9, and then this is through the regenerator, and we get to point 0.10. If we look at what's been given, we're told that the compression ratio across the turbines and the compressors are all the same, and it's equal to 8. What that tells us is P2 over P1 is going to be equal to P4 over P3 is going to be equal to P6 over P7 is going to be equal to P8 over P9, and we said that this was equal to 8. They then go on to tell us that the pressure at the inlet of the first compressor is 100 kPa, so P1 is equal to 100 kPa. They tell us that the temperature at the inlet of both compressors, so T1 is equal to T3 is equal to 20 degrees C, and they tell us that the temperature at the inlet of both turbines is 1,100 degrees C. So T6 is equal to T8 is equal to 1,100 degrees C. And they tell us that we have an ideal regenerator. So the uh, temperature at 0.5 is equal to the temperature at 0.9. I've gone ahead and changed these to Kelvin. They're asking for the work of the compressor and the work of the turbine. We can say that the work of the compressor is equal to the work of compressor 1 plus the work of compressor 2. This is equal to the change in enthalpy from 1 to 2. 
plus the change in enthalpy from 3 to 4. So this is Cp T2 minus T1 plus Cp T4 minus T3. They're also asking for the work of the turbine. We can say that the work of the turbine is the work of turbine 1 plus the work of turbine 2. And once again, it's the change in enthalpy from 6 to 7 plus the change in enthalpy from 8 to 9. So this is Cp T6 minus T7 plus Cp T, sorry, T8 minus T9. We can then go on to say that T2 over T1 is equal to P2 over P1 to the power of K minus 1 over K. And we also know that T4 over T3 is going to be equal to P4 over P3 to the power of K minus 1 over K. And we know that P2 over P1 is equal to P4 over P3 and that T1 is equal to T3. So we can conclude from this that T2 is equal to T4. We can also say through our turbines that T7 over T6 is equal to P7 over P6 to the K minus 1 over K and T9 over T8 is equal to P9 over P8 to the K minus 1 over K. And we're going to conclude something from this. So we know that P7 over P6 is equal to P9 over P8 is equal to the inverse of, so it's equal to 1 over 8. And you know that T6 is equal to T8. So from that, we can say that T7 is equal to T9. And we also know that T9 is equal to T5, so T5 as well. With this information, we can say that the work of the compressor is going to be equal to 2 times Cp T2 minus T1. And the work of the turbine is 2 Cp T6 minus T7. So all we're going to need to find in this case is T7 and T2. We're also asked to find the thermal efficiency. We can say that the thermal efficiency is equal to the work net divided by Q in. We said that this was equal to work of turbine 1 plus work of turbine 2 minus work of compressor 1 minus work of compressor 2. This will be divided by Q in 1 plus Q in 2. We can say that Q in 1 is equal to the change in enthalpy from points 6 to 5. So over here, first amount of heat added. And Q in 2 is going to be the change in enthalpy from 7 to 8. So T8 minus T7. And if you remember, we said that T5 was equal to T7 was equal to T9. So we can say that Q in total is equal to 2 Cp T6 minus T7 because we also said that T6 was equal to T8. So we managed to boil down this entire problem, this complex system, into only needing two temperatures in order to solve for everything we wanted. So we have that T2 is equal to T1 times P2 over P1 to the power of K minus 1 over K. And this is equal to 293 times our pressure ratio, 8, to the 1.4 minus 1 over 1.4. And this gives us a temperature at point 2 of 530.75 Kelvin. We can say that T7 is equal to T6 times P7 over P6 to the K minus 1 over K. And this is equal to 1,373 times 1 over 8 to the 1.4 minus 1 over 1.4. And this gives us a temperature at T7 of 757.96 Kelvin. We said that the work of the compressor is equal to 2 times Cp times T2 
530.75 minus T1, 293. And this gives us work of a compressor is equal to 474.4 kilojoules per kilogram. We said that the work of a turbine is equal to 2 times Cp times T6, so 1,373, minus T7, 757.96. This gives us a work of our compressor of 1,235.0 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. We said that our thermal efficiency was equal to 2 times Cp, T6 minus T7, sorry, 7, minus 2 times Cp, T2 minus T1, divided by 2 times Cp, T6 minus T5. But we also said that T5 was equal to T7. So we can write that our thermal efficiency is equal to, we can cancel out the 2's and the CP's, 1,373 minus 757.96 minus 530.75 minus 293 divided by 1,373 minus 757.96. This gives us an efficiency of 0 0.6134 or a thermal efficiency of 61.34%.